Good evening. It's 6.30. We have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. And as we mentioned a couple of meetings ago, probably they already have done it once. Our planning board meetings will now start at 6.30 and uh, to be consistent with everybody else and maybe get out of here a little bit earlier instead of having some of our late nights. First up for general information is Chris Zawicki. Yes, sir. Yes, we're from Tandem Bagel in East Hampton. We're looking to lease this old Sears place on 191 Russell Road. And the old what? The Sears. 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 Oh, oh, Sears. Sears. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, so you pointed that way. Sears is yeah. that way. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Where were you with again? Tandem Bagel. Tandem Bagel. Tandem Bagel. Tandem Bagel. I got a little packet for you guys. Yeah. I'm familiar with Tandem Bagel. Right What's that? Most of us, I'm sure, are familiar with Tandem I don't know if you're familiar. Yeah. Um, if you are, this is a little about us. And the other then, place in North Hampton Athletic Club? Yeah, yeah. the club and yeah. one in East Hampton. We started in East Hampton. Yeah. And then... Um, Which is a nice spot, yeah. So, we're looking at the 191 Russell, that way, sorry. And redoing it for a cafe in front and consolidating our baking in back. So it's about 8,000 square feet. We currently have baking happening in East Hampton and in Amherst. Um, we have a little a wholesale bakery in Amherst. We want to consolidate with our bagels. So we're trying to consolidate the two in the back of this space, rebuild it out, clean that up for a, a small bakery, and then have a cafe in front. Okay. Sign. Excuse me. Signage. Uh, there's pictures. They're pretty they're oh, okay. preliminary, but it's going to be what was on the building before. There'll be one on the street on the current street sign, and then probably just a logo on the front of the building where the Sears logo was. Okay. So they'll. So Hadley Cleaner is completely out of there? Yeah, it's a laundromat now. Laundromat. Yeah. I don't know where that Zephyr rug is. I've never seen it there. Oh, Ze Zephyr the rug used to be... Was it on the corner? Well, they were someplace else before. Yeah. They're in like Northampton or Amherst now, aren't they? I've, I, I've heard before. the name. They were yeah. someplace else locally. I forgot where they were. I can't remember. So this, uh, there's a laundromat in the back. We're, we're going to get the top space on the street sign because uh, we have most of the building, and then we'll have that one our logo on the front of the building. Is that yoga studio still there? It's still there, yes. Okay. It has the first three spaces. <sighs> Exterior alterations. None. Exterior illumination of signs. There's currently on the front of the building, there's a couple spotlights on the one that's okay. high. We'll leave that there. I don't believe the street sign has lights, the one on the road. It may. I, I think it had a little. We'll, I think we'll, it would. Yeah, I don't know what it had. We, we won't be changing anything yeah. there. And uh, okay. the, the only thing on the exterior is there's a garage door in the back that we're going to move. For yeah, that's, but that's, we're not changing the structure of the building at all. Yeah, that's not. So, so you're bringing in a thousand gallon yeah. propane? Or yeah. is it there already? There, uh, we'll be bringing one in. Okay. Okay. Um, you, have go, you have to go to the fire chief for that. Mm -hmm. so, the underground or above? So they've already gone to that and got a permit for one tank for the laundromat. You put a pad that can fit two okay. so that we have space. They've already put the pipe in. It's already been checked and approved. Um, so that's we'll have to go get our permit for yeah, the, that, 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 that. That's outside of our jurisdiction. That's really yeah, yeah. Let's you know, you make sure you go to yep. the fire chief for that. Yep. So it's set up for it. We just haven't gone. We just got the lease and we're just going okay. down the road. So we're going to come here first. And the Board of Health, we probably have yep. to go to them and they meet. You're downstairs at 7, yeah. All right, yeah. So. We were going to I mean, there. your permitted use of the permitted zone. No exterior alterations. No exterior. I mean, do we even need a motion? Um, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. it's just, uh, you're free to. Well, why don't you make one just just to make sure that he's yeah. covered the bases? Okay. I mean, kind of what we wanted to do. Just make sure everybody knows. Yeah. Well, the key is you're going to have smoked salmon cream cheese. So. We have it. <laughs> we have it. <laughs> yeah, we. I'll make a motion to confirm that this is an allowed use, the bakery cafe is an allowed use in the zone. A motion? And a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Good luck. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. Um, I don't even, well, this, this is your address you're going to have? Yes. Okay. Just to make sure we have a simple form I'll give to the building inspector. And uh, I'll put it in this mailbox. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Okay. Okay. Thank you.
I don't think they come safe. They are going to. Yeah. They, there's, that's one of part of the reason for going here that the, uh, um, they want to expand their banking capacity. And um, the East Hampton facility is uh, tapped out. The, isn't the drive thing new? Or was there a drive through window on it? I'm not seeing a drive through here. On the plan? Get a drive through, and then he must loop around the back. <laughs> okay, I don't have that piece. Did not come through the oh, other No. Okay. Maybe we should get it back then, because that is. Yeah. yeah. Go get them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you go? Board of Health. Yes. Yeah. I don't think it is a problem, but well, they said no exterior alterations. So. Right. <clears throat> well, they said they were moving a garage door, but yeah. that's the one back here at the receiving dock. They're moving mm -hmm. it from the front to the back. Yeah, what's the traffic flow going to be? Yeah. There it is. Looks like it dead ends. Well, he just runs out of. He's got to. A little bit of site information on the floor plan, so we should probably see a site plan. actually have been doing, we've got a new POS system that does online ordering. So we're planning on just doing a pickup window. You just drive up, all the orders are done. Okay. And you'll just uh, what's the traffic pattern going to be? Because you only show, part, well, then you've got outside seating. There's sidewalks there. But you have outside seating. Yes. Okay, this is different. You didn't explain all that. To Sorry. Us. Okay, okay, that makes a whole different scenario. Okay. What do you need to know? We will, you're... So should we your, 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 your waiver is withdrawn. Okay. Because we need to know what the parking problem problem. We need to know parking for the whole site. Okay. We ran into this with Eslon up the road. Okay. They put outside seating in and didn't provide adequate parking, and now they're parking all over the town common yeah. and everybody else. Okay. Um, so we need to see the site with the parking to make sure you have adequate parking okay. for what you're going to do. Okay. Does the so the, what the, uh, the seating area is existing. It's the existing... No, no, no. There's not a seating area. That was a... No, no. I, I'm just saying, it's, it's, a, it's a pad now that, that, was, that, that is currently it was, there. It was, it was a display area before yeah. for tractors and, for, and equipment. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, yeah. fine. We're not, we're, not, we're not questioning that it's there. Right. We're questioning that it's additional... The purpose of it. And no, just, no. We're questioning that it's additional people visiting the facility. Yeah. Oh, I see. Additional okay. parking required because you've got right here four tables. You could probably fit a few extra. Yeah, yeah, I understand. And we want to make sure this area now needs to be considered into the overall parking of two for one to make sure there's adequate parking on the site because we ran into this once before. Mm -hmm. Like, I said, excuse me, I said with Esalon, yeah. they expanded the outside parking. Do not they did not have mm -hmm. adequate yeah. parking yeah. on their site, yeah. and they were parking all over the town common. If they don't have parking here, there's no place for parking for them to move. We don't want them parking in Town Street. We don't want them parking sure, on somebody else's sure, property. Yeah. You need to accommodate all parking on your site. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So we'll need to see a site plan, a, a site plan and a traffic flow for the drive-through window. I Even though it's not, I know it's, not, it's, not it's, a, it's a pickup yeah, yeah. window, but what's the traffic pattern around right, and right, stuff right, like right. that to make sure it's, it's okay. Okay. I understand. Okay. We meet, the, you come back in two weeks, I mean, for... For the most part, for, we, 
what we approved doesn't include those things. Gotcha. Understand. So you fine. can you can move you can start your work in, but come back with the drive through and everything else to make sure you have adequate. I think I think you do. Yeah. But we want to see it on yeah, paper the, to verify. The lot is pretty yeah. big. So, so the bylaw talks about a two square feet of parking for each square foot of business floor area, which is what captures the outer space, um, as well as what's inside the four walls. Two square feet of. Uh, two square feet of parking for each square foot of business floor area. Okay. Including, including the outside seating. Including the outside seating. It, it's defined to include anything related to your purpose. Okay. So, for example, at the um, Sam's Outdoor Outfitters, the uh, kayak corral they have attached to the building is counted as part of their business floor area. Okay. Would we count the entire the cafe and the bakery? Yes. Okay. That's all your business. It's all right. your business. Oh, your okay. entire business area. The entire, the entire building okay. area. So we'll run the numbers and see where we're at with that. Okay. Um, okay. You need to include also the area of the rest of the stores on the site. For the building no, they're not just yours, but that whole building, the yep. whole the square foot of the entire building and the patio area to make sure that you have enough parking. So okay. that area, that space, was originally one lot. It was divided there into two go. lots. So each lot is supposed to support its own parking for its building. And I think that we went through that when we originally did site plan approval before the Sears actually went in. So. Yeah. Um, again, I don't think it's a problem. The one area that may affect it when we're counting square, uh, square footage, we don't count parking spaces per se. Uh, we, in square footage, we incorporate the parking stalls, the, the line spaces, plus the backing area, but we don't count throughways. So the, the, um, the driveway right around the mall, for example, yeah. does not count as parking for the mall. Um, you're taking some of that formerly still space and making it into a throughway, a a throughway with the yeah. um, with the drive drive up drive or pickup window. So that is one thing we hadn't looked at previously. Yeah, yeah, I understand. So well, that's fine. That's I'm okay. glad you found it now or set it now. Okay, so I'll make a formal motion to withdraw approval. Need more parking information. Second. Okay. We need to vote on it? Sure. Okay. To withdraw. Okay. So. Aye. 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 Okay. So. So we say? You can, well, you can, well, you can still go to Tim that, you know, we, we're in favor of the overall thing. I don't think we're going to be against this. We just want to see everything on paper. On paper. Sure. Understand. That's okay. Right. No, that's good. That's good. No problem. Okay. I understand. Glad you caught us before we left. Oh, and your copy sets came up one short. I did not get the floor plan. Mark oh. had uh, okay. You good? Okay. okay. <coughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're on. There will be one more person coming in. Okay. Um, they had called me, um, and then we'll talk about that at the end. Okay. Uh, but they were aware that this was meeting time. I just have to wait. And we do get here. How's MS4 coming along with Patty? Slowly? Um, slowly but surely. I think we, in, in, in getting an update from Patty in regards to the following meeting on the 4th, yeah. that should be the last meeting. Oh, really? Um, okay. And then we can figure out, as far as timeline, how we move from there. But as far as... Have you heard anything from, from uh, Joel on anything? I have not. Joel I'm going to email him. I'll email Joel, see if he responds to me, saying that we want to basically amend the zoning bylaw to reference the general bylaw. Um, how do we do that? Okay. Yeah, and I had specifically asked him about that authority question and who would who would be the enforcement authority. Yeah. Uh, so. The way the by, the way we're they're rewriting the general bylaw is there the planning board will have overall overseer authority, but there are specific sections where planning board, board of health, conservation and the DPW 
are going to have out of it, depending on what's going on. So that's pretty, actually pretty cool. Straightforward. So when is you said uh, September fourth? Is that September fourth? So that is yeah. going to be our I think our last working group unless something comes up that day. But in speaking with Patty, yeah. it seemed as if we were nearing the end. Right. Um, based on our previous working group meetings during the month of July. Um, so we'll assess on that the fourth. Um, so, and when is town meeting? Right now, I think it's the John town meeting. Um, twenty fourth, October fifteenth. I think it's October. Let's see if I have it in here. I think it's the twenty fourth, right? That's right. I think. Uh, I think it's special town meeting the twenty fourth. You're right. Okay. Okay. So just yeah. enjoining articles to do on the 10th or 11th, something like that. Yeah. I mean, all articles, but we can, we can, we can reserve places. We can, we can broker places, yeah. So just logistically, if we've been meeting usually at the first Tuesday of the mm -hmm. month uh, on planning, but you won't have the complete product for, for the Not third. Not so would it, third. that make more sense to meet on the 24th? No, 17th, I'm sorry. Oh, with, uh, with, with, with Ken? Yes. Yep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I imagine, um, assuming that we're able to complete the, the product, um, and maybe it, I think it will be clear with, with um, you know, council um, chiming in. But it would be a rescission of the by the zoning bylaw um, and then adoption of a general bylaw. Um, so I guess you know if that requires a public hearing, and I'm not. I mean, it, it would because it's affecting the zoning bylaw. Well, we, we're, we'll be modifying. We'll be amending the zoning bylaw, so that would be a public hearing. Right. Yeah. Um, does then would the public hearing then be? Scheduled for that October first October meeting, and we, you have we, we, time? we could schedule a, we could schedule the uh, public hearing on the fifteenth of October, which is, okay. which is over, which is a, a week before the town meeting. Okay. okay, that'd be a regular planning board meeting day. So yeah, that's not a problem. Okay, I mean if the worst comes to worst, we could do it on the twenty second and just have a special meeting or something like that. So it's okay. We'll have time for that. Um, so I think that in, in regards to the MS4, um, you know, I don't know, if, Jim, you've been providing any updates you know, uh, at the last meeting. Just, 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 just briefly, what was yeah. going on and um, stuff like that. So I mean, we're, we're, we're still continuing to go through that. Patty and I actually came out here last week um, at the invitation of Janice Stone. Um, because yeah, conservation commission. Um, because there was a a um, DEP um, presentation here for some of the conservation agents and, and commission members um, in regards to the MS4, um, and it's how it doesn't quite align with the um, Wetlands Protection Act, and so <laughs> we're gonna. I, and that might be a conversation that comes up at the next meeting, Jim, um, mm -hmm. in regards to the standards that need to be met. Um, because mm -hmm. it seems as if the DEP um, is still trying to engage with EPA in regards to saying if these standards are met, then it's also compliant with the Wetlands Protection Act, um, rather than having these two kind of related permits in regards to stormwater um, be, you know, it would be hard for um, the administration of it. Um, so that, I mean, it was insightful, definitely, but I think that there is still some conversation that's happening uh, between the EPA and DEP in regards to that. Um, but I guess we'll see. The, the permits are supposed to be um, 
completed or the, the bylaw amendments are supposed to be completed by next July, July 1st is when the MS4 permit takes, you know, um, is in place. Um, so, it, it, yeah, we'll, you know, we'll see um, and, and just continue to monitor that. Um, so the other project that I've been um, working with the board on, and this is um, kind of the discussion um, in regards to the definitions section. Um, so what I did is you have two products here, um, and I pulled out in what in the the handout that's called zoning related terms definition pulled from the Hadley zoning bylaw. That's specific to all of your special regulations that had definition sections. Um, and I pulled them out and provided some notes using, um, that's in relation to the other handout, which is um, general, like a general definitions ter uh, section that would, could be found in the zoning bylaw. Um, and so there are a couple comments to go through um, I, I know that I handed this out today, so obviously you didn't review it. But um, I think in general, um, understanding that you seem to be um, open to the idea of clumping related bylaws together within a definition section of yeah. the bylaw, so creating a new definition section. Um, and so what I imagine is that if we go through your um, special regulations terms and then um, and then integrate it into a template, which is what this other document is, um, that it could be sufficient for the purposes of adding a definition section. Um, I went through the template version and removed items that are not in your bylaw at all. Um, there are some there is some overlap and um, where there is um, I did provide some um, comments in regards to whether or not you would want to use your definition or the definition that is in the template um, for instance uh, the bed and breakfast definition you have a whole section on bed and breakfast regulation um, and you have a definition within that section for hotels and motels. Um, this definition that's in the template version also has, uh, it has a different definition for hotels and motels. Um, and I guess in context, and you know your bylaw better, um, could you see a hotel and motel being pulled out of the bed and breakfast and it being applicable to other hotel and motel uses that are what's allowed as far as uses in, in your zoning districts. Um, so that's kind of generally where the questions um, kind of lie. A, a little bit of history on some of these sure. topics. There were several bylaws that were adopted, amended, whatever word you want to call them, over the course of a few short years. And between Joe and Bill and myself, we were each on individual committees on this particular bylaw. Okay. And some of the definitions that particularly a bed and breakfast, Bill championed that section. Mm -hmm. um, home occupations, I championed. And Joe had some other ones he was champion, championing them. Uh, so we probably can give you those answers to a lot of it and especially with the hotel that was put in there to define within bed and breakfast so that somebody wasn't going to try to put a hotel into right. it obviously right um so i guess the answer you know bill make yeah. better to explain where, the, where he thinks it would be appropriate sure. to do that yeah no that's you're exactly right it was it was uh in there it was sort of a belt and suspenders a private occupied owner op operated house etc and which is not a hotel okay so the purpose of bed and breakfast wasn't to define hotels and motels, right. except as uh, but it wasn't. It was, yeah. Upper limit. It was just to uh, exclude them specifically. So um, I'm sure that'd be fine to have. Uh, um, 
the, but I think what I appreciate from the definitions that you've established for the bed and breakfast section and my comment in the template version is that maybe use the um, citation of um, MGL that you use, which is chapter 140, section 6. Um, I think the overlap, I, I think the definition um, is comparable. Um, but maybe like adding, you know, the um, MGL citation that's listed in your bylaw. Um, wherever I can use MGL, I think is, is appropriate for the zoning bylaw. Um, I think um, so. That that was just kind of, um, and what I imagine is that maybe at the following meeting, or if if you know individual members want to email me in regards to. Uh, the comments that I've posed here, the questions that I've posed. Um, I don't know if it's, if it's a productive use of time um, to, to go through each one at this moment. But, um, you know, it's, it's general questions on whether or not um, maybe items can be pulled um, altogether or um, a definition that does overlap between the two documents if one is preferable. Um, you know, I think there is something that I had a question about specific to dwellings. Um, you define housing as a, in the senior housing section of the bylaw. Um, I don't know if, I, I know that there are some uses in your zoning bylaw dependent on where in the, which zoning district those types of uses are allowed. Um, I think you had uh, single family, uh, multi, uh, single family, two family, three family. Um, with that said, I know there was one definition, um, and if you look at the template version that I sent, um, there's a triplex use and multifamily use that you have in your bylaw. Multifamily in one section, 8.2.1 of your bylaw, has structure with more than three or more dwelling units. And in 24.3.1.1, multifamily has four or more dwelling units. So I think just... That just applies to the... So is that just applicable to senior? Correct. To senior housing? Right. So maybe then... I guess because that, we're we're one dwelling per lot, and yeah. that's been kind of from day one of the zoning concept. Mm -hmm. uh, primarily, not to have apartments. Sure. There are apartments in town, but they're the 40B housing, the ZBA, yeah, uh, overruled. Uh, okay. So one dwelling per lot is kind of traditional. And it's been in for a long time, and uh, there's always some movement afoot that people want to get apartments in, but apartments need sewer, and our sewer infrastructure mm -hmm. needs updating. We don't need new sewer lines coming in, so it's a... Uh, so then maybe it's, it's not worthwhile to define what a dwelling unit is for the purposes of of understanding that the dwelling units in regards to increasing density um, would be applicable only to senior housing. Um, no, we don't, I, I personally don't think we'd like to muddy the waters. There is, uh, like the first paragraph, one dwelling per lot. Okay. That is, that's it. And <clears throat> trailers, there is a tiny house mm -hmm. movement that mm -hmm. came in. Was that a dwelling? Was it a trailer? It was a trailer. And, uh, but uh, that eventually failed. So I, I, I would agree with you. I think it probably makes sense for us not to, we, we have in the past gone through these line by line, but I think that we probably right. should read them for us right. before yeah, we I, I, yeah. what, what it. Yeah. What are you trying to accomplish? We talked well, about this kind of stuff. What are you trying to accomplish? So what I, simplify something? Or? So usually definitions, because you know, in going through this, you have twelve pages yeah. of definitions that are 
in individual sections. Yeah. So the, the model that I had given you was a model that um, other towns have used and my previous uh, position, um, we established this as a model where we would keep related uses that are covered under special regulations like adult mm -hmm. uses, mm -hmm. um, um, solar, marijuana, um, and they get like special treatment in a definition section. So basically it, it's a compilation of all the definitions um, I've, uh, of, of your special regulations in addition to um, just doing a quick survey of <coughs> this template version of items that you may have <coughs> wanted to define before but haven't done or um, don't and, and so um, I just kind of can you move all these definitions around without changing the intent of the original definition? Oh, yeah. Sorry. No, let's, definitely. Let's, definitely. Well, let's take one for example. Uh, roof height. Sure. Excuse me. That's in here, is it? Yes. Building height. Hello? Building height, yeah. So these, um, I believe. Building height. Oh, I got it. That's in the template. So this is this is in the template. You yeah. don't have building height. We don't. No. Yeah. That was a. It was not defined. That's right. one of the things that we want to do. Is we want to start oh, defining okay. certain things. Yes. Correct. So I mean, I think the the thing that I did here was um, these are probably typical definitions uh, related to building and structures, streets, how it's Sorry defined, um, and so those are kind of left there, um, and it sounds. Sorry about that. I walked out after I asked a question. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're going to have to remind me, though. <laughs> I, um, I think what we were saying was that... Or is it a stupid question? So no, it's not, because if you don't have a definition section. The definitions that do exist are particular to the special regulations that yeah. we established. And so I know... Um, and in you know working with some planning boards, they're like, oh man, I wish we defined that because we had this issue. Um, and so what I've taken is this template that I've used, um, and these are general terms um, specific to um, buildings, streets, uh, structures, um, and then you have your um, versions which would get incorporated into this definition section. So then you would, you would basically, your motion at a future town meeting would be to remove all the definition sections from this, 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 and this, and create a new definition section. Um, People that were just in, and they want to have an outdoor seating area sure. where there is cemented in, and uh, I call it the echelon uh, loophole closed. Yep. And uh, it definitely indicates that outdoor patio areas, et cetera, et cetera. So we don't want to be in, in conflict with that definition of, uh, of our bylaws. So we'll have to look more closely at that. That's what you're getting at to go over it. Right. Yeah. And okay. yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I sent this to the board this morning. Um, but I imagine you know, over time, um, and before we meet next, um, you would have had a chance to look at it, provide yeah. a comment. Um, I, you know, I, I did do a survey in regards to looking at your bylaw. Um, I removed items that were in this template that are not in your bylaw, um, and then offer some comments in those other sections, whether or not you know, you may want to introduce something. Um, well, it's fresh in our mind. I mean, we all had a, a kind of a, our version of what the height of the building is. And obviously the people who were building it were talking about the mean, which is what this standard, this template. Is. Correct. The template has the mean in there. But uh, I'd like to keep it simple. In other words, the top of the roof pitch is the height of the building. Yeah. And so are the building inspector, by the way. I talked to him about that. He says that he was in favor of using the highest point of the roof. For the peak of the roof. Yeah, how do you figure out the mean? I mean, 
nobody could figure it out. And right. then, yeah, you can, yeah, if, you, if you took geometry, you can figure yeah, it out. You can problem. figure it out. The problem being, <laughs> with, it's not something that you can look at the picture and say, it's here. It takes some, it takes, it takes geometry exactly. and trigonometry to do that. Hey, that's yeah. My whole point about pencil place, it's a trapezoidal building. Once you get up high, and it kind of goes like this. So is the height up here, or is yeah. it the mean here? Yeah. So, well, well, they have that. That's the stop. Yeah, yeah. Stock. yeah so that's anyway, considered, um, yeah. So we just want to go to the highest point of the roof. Which I think is fair because you're talking about flat roofs versus peak roof. A peak roof building can be larger than a flat roof building. Right. So, yeah, with a flat roof, um, I believe the way we want to use on a flat roof, it would be uh, typically the parapet around yeah. many flat roofs. Which is generally the highest point. Yeah, yeah. Well, shake it is that. That's what's that? Right. Yep. Yeah. There's usually a parapet, which would be higher than a flat roof, you know, right? Generally. So would you would, would you use the height of the of the flat roof, or would you use the height of the parapet? Well, yeah. In that case, the roof is actually lower than the building, so That's you would use the, the highest point. Yeah, and, well, I, and we'll probably want to put in some definition about roof appurtenances or something. You know, if you have a, that's already in there, right? Because if they're over a certain size, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Well, we, we, we don't include like uh, cupolas and decorative features on a roof as any part of, as any part of the height. Okay. Very so if I was going to build a church, would this be my roof height or would the steeple be no. my, you know, be this, this would be a, this would be a point. Right. So that raises another question though, the in the village center overlay, we require a peaked roof. Correct and we have a height limitation and a stories limitation and if I were to believe the representations that were made for the hotel you can't have three stories and a peaked roof within the height limit without a very low slope which would need well you can't don't forget they have they have 10 and 12 foot heights in their stories yes. Yeah. So if you, it is possible depending on how high the stories are inside. Okay. I don't want to create a situation where the bylaw prohibits what we're telling people to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that the, the geometry may need some. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The uh, okay. thinking through there. So well, I would say on a, on a flat roof, if they have a parapet around, it would be the height of the flat roof because typically. A parapet is usually used there as a fall measure, fall protection, and a little protection of the roof. And those are typically less than three to four feet high. Yeah, the template is usually right. the. Uh, In general, um, for example, the library at UMass, you know, you've got there the parapet is you know, eighteen feet because it's trying to hide the cooling towers which are on top. Okay. So, but I don't think anyone's going to build that. Well, yeah, we're not going to have anything that high. <laughs> yeah. Well. Well, so the flat roofs and with those, I, my first office looked down on the extension of the uh, courthouse. They had a flat roof and they had drains in it. And in New England, those drains were always plugging up and people were there and it leaked all the time. So I think they did learn their lesson. Yeah. Flat roofs are not good for, well, to build a flat roof in New England, it can be done. If you've got a large building, you have to do it. Have but to they it. are very expensive to build a good flat roof. Well, if it's the lowest bidder. But for a commercial, it's handier because you can put equipment up there that, yeah. that then frees up building space under the roof. Yeah. So, so anyways, on a very technical ground, what um, we had bounced around with uh, back when Larry was sitting in your seat, mm -hmm. was putting the definitions as in part one. Okay. Where we just have this purpose and definitions. And yeah. purpose will be A, the definitions will be B. Mm -hmm. That way we don't have to renumber that makes everything sense. else. Um, or put it at the end, because people expect to see it. Yeah, I mean, I've seen it right after the purpose mm -hmm. or at the end of the document. You know, the thing is, yeah. at the end, then are you going to renumber every time that you add a new special regulation? Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, 
Yes. Yeah. So those will be per so we'll be yeah. I think Bill's idea is to go to purpose and definition. I like the idea of it being one B. And it's also right then, then you pass over them before you get to the meat of the yeah, document. So that if you have questions, you know you can go back and get clarity. Whereas you might go go ahead without checking that at the end. Oh, that was defined back there. I, I get, getting to a, def a question on a definition on internally lit sub. <coughs> The last, the, your second sentence. This includes, but is not limited to, sign with light sources behind, semi-translucent material, or layered signs with light sources behind text characters. What does that mean? I don't know. That's your bylaw. <laughs> um, it's, it's in our bylaw? Yeah. So I, I literally just lifted everything that was in your science <laughs> section. Um, so... What would it be under, Jim? Uh, you got... <coughs> under the sign, excess sign, and sign internally lit, halfway down the page, on the front page. Oh yeah, I got it. I get it. So maybe it's like you're a white layered sign with light sources behind text. Would that be the the uh, letters standing out, as opposed to being flush with the sign standing out a bit? Well, does that mean like like back? We permit backlit signs. Sure. In fact, we kind of like backlit signs because they're kind of subdued. Mm -hmm. Right, but that's not translucent. I mean, no, but but it's what, what my question is: layered signs with light sources behind text. It is a light source behind a text. But what does the layered mean? Okay, layered sign with light source. Okay, it's right, it's right in there. Yeah, it's saying semi-translucent material or layer. Yeah, I guess we'd have to explain that layer. I must layer sign. Layer of sign. See cool mm. as an answer. <laughs> the light source behind text characters. Hmm. Yeah, so that is includes pretty but not limited to. So that is reaching the type of signs that we've been talking about or suggesting to people. Right. Yeah, I mean, it, that last sentence in that sign, internally lit, any internally lit sign is considered a light emitting right. sign. So then those are the signs that you don't like. Well, maybe after we, we'll have to think about that. We'll, hit, we'll have that aha moment, I yeah. remember. <laughs> right. I remember why we put it in. Okay. Right. Well, that is my question. It's not part of our bylaw. We don't want to meet either. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 But going back to the bigger picture, I think the template does work. Um, I don't think we may need to think about typographically because we can't produce all this color right um, but we can have in <coughs> you know, insets below themes yes you know. um, I guess then another question is whether or not you would want each definition numbered each what definition numbered no 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 I mean there's a lot of definitions no, no we don't want to number because then if we change them then it makes yeah. a mess so we don't I don't see a reason to number them yeah, I mean, I know that in some uh, sections of your bylaws, some definitions are numbered. Um, okay. Only that would only be if, if, yeah. Again, we did not create everything from scratch. No, I know. Uh, yeah, and, and it, it, I mean, like solar, marijuana. I mean, the definitions are the de these are the same definitions I've seen elsewhere. Okay. So, yes, they uh, mostly come from PVPC. Right. <laughs> So uh, that was just a, a function of how um, how those how they units were formatted. Yeah. So um, yeah, I don't think numbering is going to help. I, th I think we put them in alphabetical order, um, and like when they're used, like the way you kind of got them in your template, when they're for a unique unique section, like adult use, adult use establishment, adult use bookstore, adult use, adult use, or even adult, whatever it may be, yeah. so that it, you, it kind of signifies it for that sense, like, you know, whether marijuana, you call it cannabis marijuana, whatever right. whatever is 
cannabis might be easier. Something put together shorter, or you have less less piping when you got to copy it. Yeah, I mean, um, I think as you mentioned, Bill, I think if you were to maybe bold or have adult uses, and then the clause, the following terms is associated with adult adult uses, and then maybe indent yeah, um, so. those specific yeah. terms. Yep. Yeah. Um, because you know they are, if they're re in the related section, um, it's not. Uh, it, I mean, you have some that don't start with that word. So, like substantial, significant portion, is specific to the adult use part. Uh, Although um, maybe we would want to, while we're editing it anyway, add mm -hmm. in. Uh, for instance, I have to be looking at dwellings here. Yeah. So you have dwelling, multifamily dwelling, tabs, and then a group home. But you could have dwelling, group home. Yeah. Okay, I see uh, what you're saying, and then have a like, comma, uh, dwelling group home, or a dash or something. Okay. Um, well, yeah, you have dwelling comma two families, so you could have dwelling comma group home. Yeah, I, I and, and that would keep the consistency of. Uh, in regards to the group home, I don't know if you have another term for that in your bylaw. I didn't find it. Just using the find function. Well, I, I definitely appreciate the effort you put into this. What we have had been seen in some prior samples were more sort of, oh, why don't you use these definitions instead? Oh, so, no, I um, having taking the time to pull ours and organize them is very helpful. And um, I think it will make the rest of the bylaw somewhat more manageable. Uh, we don't have this as much verbiage at the beginning of each one. Yeah. And, you know, I think something that would be helpful too is um, you have the, the related terms sentence, the following terms are associated with adult uses. You can also say, C section this, or, you know, mm -hmm. or something. Some right. General language like that. That's right. I echo, echo Bill's comment about making the definitions specific to our zone bylaw. Oh, yeah. yeah. So why did you, for instance, delete adult daycare in, oh, I'm sorry, no, I'm in, I'm in the template. That's why you deleted it. Yeah. Because I didn't delete anything in, in your re special regulations. Okay. Okay. Um, I put a comment there um, if I felt, you know, if there was some. Okay. Um, Got it. So, so the, the cross-outs are, they don't appear in your bylaw. So I removed them from this template. Okay. Whether or not you want to discuss that further and maybe introduce some related definition, you know, maybe you can. Um, well, we can look at that. You can look at that and, and yeah. you know, make that. Comment. I think for the time being, we need to walk. And we need to simply take the definition we have, put it in one section. This is going to become a somewhat evergreen document for a while. Because as we get further into this, we're going to be doing, um, I hate to say it, a lot more defining for out of necessity. Mm -hmm. But we can always add more to it without a lot of pain. But at least we have the definitions in one place. And those that aren't defined, we'll have them defined that we know we need. And it's going to make the zoning enforcement officer very happy. Yeah. So as soon as you get something that we can, why could you have a copy of this? Um, I I have the. I sent the digital copy. Oh, you just sent the digital copy. Okay. Maybe that was earlier. Okay. Next year. Maybe. So I'll forward it to Tim. Okay. One. We ought to also bring up. Some of the controversial things. Uh, five or more people living in a house. Is that, that enforceable that, or not enforceable? It's really up to the building inspector. You know, when I was town planner, that was always something that came up. Um, what town? Was it a college town? No, it was the town of Southbridge. Um, okay. Population of about 17,000. But um, the building inspector, the zoning enforcement officer, and I, we ended up tag teaming um, I, you know my job is the town planner I don't I'm not a zoning enforcement officer so right. I can tell you know the building inspector the zoning enforcement officer 
sir, say um, these need to go before the planning board or this needs to go before the ZBA. Um, and um, he would always come to me in regards to um, is can this be defined this way um, based on I know who lives there um, and they're not a family, uh, something like that. Um, you know, and it is it his it is his interpretation or it is his or hers interpretation. Um, I've offered family, um, I think, is a definition, um, and it's specific to uh, and that's in your template. That's specific to related by blood, marriage, or adoption, all residing as a single integral housekeeping unit. Um, no, you, it's the same problem. It's an evergreen yeah, problem it, in every time. It's the enforcement issue. Yeah. Um, it's very difficult, I think. So it's to, not a yeah. legal interpretation that's uh, really... I think it, we want to be very careful about going it, into... I, I, I agree. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a slippery slope from we don't want uh, a, um unlicensed frat house to... Uh, why, why are all these people living together? Uh, so, yeah. You know, we don't necessarily want to go, we don't want to know necessarily why people are choosing to live together. Um, and the other ones that came up, maybe Janice Stone alluded to this, uh, the uh, FEMA representative, or actually MEPA, the Massachusetts uh, representative, mm -hmm. uh, was a little concerned that we allow trailers along the flood way. I think I was at that meeting. Select board, select board. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. uh, no, that was mentioned, but there was another oh, one specifically okay. where uh, someone from the state uh, mass emergency management mm -hmm. came out to do a periodic review, yeah. um, and we had the building inspector, fire chief, town administrator. Jim and I were there. I don't remember if you were there. Uh, I think yeah, you were. Yeah. There, yeah. So. Um, that was more uh, focused on overall compliance from the state regulator's perspective yeah. of what's what. I know that um, the FEMA maps were being, um, I don't know if you want to call it improved, I think it covered the town in a, in a bigger um, flood district, um, but where I worked previously, um, we had to make bylaw amendments to adjust for that based on the types of structures that could be allowed in the floodplain. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that's, you know, if, if, the, if the, the comment from the FEMA administrator for MEPA was that you couldn't have that kind of development mm -hmm. or... She was specifically talking about things like uh, trailers in the floodway, not in the floodplain. <laughs> So I guess the idea is that uh, FEMA doesn't want to see trailers floating downstream. Stacked up at the Hoyo Dam. Um, but but yeah, that, that so whole section about, it, that's in, no, that's not erosion and sediment control, no, that's a different it's not section. Overly related well, the, the cynical part of me, you know, I'm here from the federal government here to help you, they're helping us redo the map so they'll be in a digital format. However, they also claim they're going to maybe expand the, uh, the floodplain, the 100 year floodplain, mm -hmm. and uh, do you think they're looking for more people to be involved to pay into the insurance fund? <laughs> There's an awful lot of advertising on TV about joining the flood programs. I know. Well, they're running out of money, and so they just want more people to pay into the, uh, the federal flood insurance program, so. Anyway, well, okay, so those are the two <coughs> questions. That, uh, sometimes I, we have to define things a little bit more. Right, and I think floodway, you know, to that point, that you wouldn't necessarily, it probably would rely on the building inspector to determine in a site plan um, no, you guys actually, well, you guys do the permitting for mobile homes. Well, well we have a section on mobile homes. That's CBA. CBA. I mean. But nevertheless, if we're not in compliance according to this 
woman that was making yeah. the presentation, there could be some consequences to the town. So, if and as a practical matter, we know we're not in compliance because yeah. the number of people who have trailers parked by the river is significantly larger than the number of people who have sought permits. Right. And that is something that uh, the building inspector has not made a priority. Um, and yeah, well, OK. So those, yeah, okay. well, yeah it, I mean, that's an enforcement an enforcement issue. So we, we, work, we create the tools. Right, exactly. Um, yeah, you wouldn't, based on floodway, you probably wouldn't put any development there. And if that was established in a site plan, assuming that those people would come before whatever board they have to and get a permit, you would establish that. You can't build up there. Um, but if they're plopping themselves in that specific area, defies the one dwelling per lot, you know, they, they're clustered five or ten at a time. Well, okay. Moving on. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll review this with the goal of taking it up on the 24th. So what I can do and... 17th. 17th. So what I can do is, um, you know, maybe if you want to come up with a date to submit any I can at least integrate both of these so that you have all your related definitions in one section with some minimal formatting that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, either at that meeting on the 17th, discuss that. We can do that. Okay. If, if, you, if the board has provided me any comments, you know, in the, in the meantime, or we can do okay. that. So, can I just turn so I think if I understand where you're going with this, this is what you pulled from our Correct. documents. And this is a template and you would the next step would be drop these alphabetically into here, but would you also keep the ones that you haven't crossed out, ones that might help us that we haven't already Yes. That's the idea. So, yeah. so where did this template come from? This is the template I've been um that I used. In oh, so this has nothing to do with Hadley currently. No, no. Other I was confused. I, I thought this is no, 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 no. This that's is why I was is, asking questions. This is this is Hadley definitely. Yeah, so I'm very slow. When you come in here, you got to tell us what the hell you want before me. Okay. Other yeah. than um, <laughs> other than removing the definitions in the template that don't pertain to the the Hadley zoning okay. bylaw. So if they don't, if they're not established in the bylaw okay. in your bylaw, I. Well, I'll cross them off. Okay. Um, but they're offered as a suggestion if the board wants to meet the established definition. So, uh, MS4, we're meeting at what o'clock again? Or? No, 11. 11 o'clock. Um, well, um, 11 a.m., right up here. Yeah. On the 4th. On the 4th, right. So, how about if we try to get comments to Ken by the 4th of September? Uh, which would give us the first Tuesday in September to quickly talk about anything we may want to talk about jointly. And we're going to put that on the agenda too, Bill. That would be good. And uh, then we can get the different, we can submit what we have to you um, by the 4th. By the 4th. By the, the, by the end of the day on the 4th, get the comments that we've reviewed individually or jointly up to the 3rd to Ken. Okay, but we won't need you. We won't expect to see you on the no. third. Right, only on the seventeenth. Only on the seventeenth. On the seventeenth, we'll present definitions and MS four, or you separate. MS4? Probably, hopefully, have both for that day. That'll give us plenty of time. That'll give us a month to uh, schedule and hold the public hearing. So if we, if you have work product for MS4 prior to the 17th, mm -hmm. send it to me and I will share it with town council. 
as early as possible. So as, okay. as soon as you have what you consider to be a, at least a, um, a polished draft, right. um, I'd like to get it to town council so he can, uh, so they can start going over it. So I think um, just switching back to MS4, I think the way the working group has been looking at this is that there are standards that are currently in your zoning bylaw, um, but the bylaw itself should be relatively bare bones. A, a set of regulations would be adopted by presumably the planning board, um, and that is a, an action by the planning board. Um, I think the, the town council would help in ensuring that the planning board can act as the um, as the authority that can approve those regulations um, because I think that's an outstanding question whether or not that can happen um, but yeah we would be able to I think share with the board um, what that would look like I, um, as far as work product in regards to what goes before the select board or is that something that you handle or the, the board handle? Does the, um, do I create those documents? Is there a template? Um, you know, for instance, if, if there's a warrant item that is to rescind the, um, the stormwater bylaw and illicit discharge bylaw, does that product come through the board or from your consultant? <coughs> it would be just for consistency. I'd be great. I think you could do it. Okay. So that so we'd have like, uh, and that's a question maybe for town council. Can we have one article that uh, repeals section nine dash a section eleven dash a? Yeah. We have to individually repeal the definitions wherever they are. But I think. In the same article and substitute therefore section 2b or 1b um, okay I don't want to get into a situation where we're doing of taking a vote to, to rescind regulations and a separate vote to or rescind definitions and a separate vote to create new ones right. um, because if one failed we got nothing right right so we want to do obviously one one to, one to cover right and I think that the council mm -hmm. would be very helpful in mm -hmm. determining how we can word it so that, you know, assuming that it does get um, passed, that <coughs> you do it in one motion where you don't oh, have this. I'm sure we can do that. Yeah. 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 The way it used to be done is you present the new article first, pass it, and then, oh, by the way, now we've got to rescind the old one. Oh, yeah. So you, yeah. you can do that. So, yeah. if, if, we, if we can't, we'll do it in one motion. Depending on how, depending on how complex the motion would be. Right. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, I mean, it would be a rescission of the entire zoning bylaw in regards to that, um, because your end goal is to adopt general bylaw. Mm. Um, oh, for that one, for the for the for the MS four, yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. For the definitions, it could get right. No. It could get very messy. You're right. Well, well, some of you, come up you know, for the uh, MS four, one would be a bit more clear because you're somebody got. You've got a general and a, and a zone, you're going to amend one. Right. You're going to amend both by one making one very brief and one very complex, more right. complex. Right. But it is what we have to do. Mm -hmm. What is the goal or the purpose of the uh, presentation on the 17th? That is to present to us for our review, or is it also for? Um, our constituents to, I mean, are we already signed off on it after the third? No, 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 no. The third is, the third has nothing to do with anything. The third is, is when we've... The third is, the third is a comment that we, on the, on the meeting, on our planning board meeting on the third, we will take our comments on the definitions, mm -hmm. talk about them, and get them to Ken by the end of the day on the fourth. Okay. Whatever they may be. Right. Um, he will then incorporate and he will return at least by the 17th with a amended 
definition section based on our comments. Could we get them ahead of time, like Friday the 13th or something? Mm -hmm. Depends when you have them available. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that would be the goal to have them emailed yeah. to us. Yeah. So we can review them and not be like right. this. Yeah. Fresh. Yeah. And look at them. Yeah. And depending on what we have on the 17th, it's either going to be, yeah, we like it or, well, we're not going to be ready for town meeting in the fall. The definitions section is not a, we want it, don't get me wrong, but it's not drop dead that we have to have it for the fall no, town no. meeting. No. MS4, different story. Right. Okay. MS4 is a higher priority. We have to get it done. Okay. Yeah. Definition we've been working on now for well, it's been a on long time. seven, eight years. Yes. So if we miss it by six months, I'm not going to say let's go with it because we want something. Let's make sure it's at least good, good and ready before we pull the trigger. Yeah. MS4 is a different story. Like I said, that's a we're under we're, we're we're not under the gun yet. We could do it in May, but it would really, really be pushing the limit. I guess my point is, I'm just trying to you know being the newest guy on the board. I remember when we, uh, and you had the, I think it was the marijuana rules, and there was a gentleman from the public that would sit in the front row, and he had been reviewing them, and he would, <coughs> and he would have his comments at each meeting. Yep. That could be happening with MS4, and could be happening with definitions, right? It's open to the public if they want to. It's not so much on their radar. Right, right. But, but if they wanted to, they could Abs be. Absolutely, yes. but, I, but you're not going to get the, you're not going to get the interest <coughs> on MS4 because yeah. it's real lack of better term, nebulous yeah. Yeah. than most people. Yeah. Definition is kind of like it's already there. Yeah. We're not changing the world. We're just kind of defining it, putting it in one from multiple areas into one. Making our document easier yeah. to use. Right. It's, a yeah. bit, it's a bit more clear, but we also want to make sure that we do it properly. Okay. You know? yeah. Just to reiterate yeah. what my colleague yeah. said, in the future, it would be very helpful to get these things before the meeting. No, I Tell us yeah. what they are. And what, if anything, do you want us to do regarding these documents when we get to the meeting? What should we be prepared to do? Because, you know. Yeah. Consider us a bunch of dummies. Yeah, consider us a dummy. We don't know how we use that. Okay. More than 24 hours, please. Yes, definitely. And, you know, noted for the, um, the version to be delivered by um, the 13th. So, yeah. you know, understanding that I was coming before the board today, I, you know, it was the product finally got done with, you know, with the rest of my work plan um, that I was able to at least share before the meeting rather than, you know. The key is to tell us what, if anything, we should be prepared to do relative to the documents that you gave us, yeah. if anything. Right. Okay. Which you kind of did with your yeah, with your yeah. comments in the sidebar, but I guess yeah, a, a general. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no lashing to it. We're just saying well, how we could improve this process. Sure, yeah, exactly, exactly, sure. exactly. Okay. You know, I, I note that you put the date on the bottom. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Requests yeah. are fulfilled. It helps us track. Yeah. Other people don't do that. They don't like to sign them either. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, yeah, I did appreciate it. I have. Kevin, I may have already mentioned it, the, um, the historic work programs you set. Uh, that was very helpful. To s and we may want to talk about that at some point. Did I, set, I think I set those around to everyone. So the, that work program that's at the back of each contract, what we're oh, going to work oh, yeah. on this okay. year. Oh, oh yes. And yes. Um, what was done, what, what's been accomplished. And what hasn't been accomplished. So yes. there's some leftovers from three, four, five, six years ago that, uh, oh, yeah, that was a good idea. You know? uh, I'll send that around again. Uh, is that might be something we would yeah, want I to discuss. I remember that, but I didn't, again, I didn't know what it was for. Yeah, it could be I'm on the planning board to the CPA, and we're supposed to get a booklet. It's never quite accomplished, so. Okay. See where that one is. <laughs> is that like a permitting guide? Pardon? The, for the, so. It's just the policies. Uh, okay. Yeah, there are some things that, and we we never really adopted a uh, set of planning board general regulations. Uh, there are a lot of things that we find ourselves repeating to every applicant who comes in. Sure. Um, and there are some concepts we have, like reserve parking, which means you, if you have the space, but you don't need the space, we don't care if you don't pay the space. Okay. Um, 
So if you have a, a 40 square foot, 40,000 square foot building that has 10 employees, you do not need two acres of asphalt. Okay. And we don't require that you do two acres of asphalt, but that's never been written down anywhere. Could uh, that be in a checklist that uh, you were assigning to me? Uh, <coughs> it could be, but I think that, that there, there are some things, uh, yeah, the, the permitting guide, I think, was something that we were working on for a while, and I pulled up copies of, uh, you know, some, Springfield has a, a set of fairly detailed step-by-step, -step, how, yeah. how do you, uh, how do you open a barbershop? You know, okay. What, you have to go to this board, you have to go to that board. Uh, right. There are things we've just, uh, haven't gotten to. The uh, ZBA, I just checked that today, has a, uh, their application is online, and uh, it has like four pages of instructions on filling out a one-page application. But a lot of it is sort of boilerplate about what we are, what we do, uh, when we meet. Uh, okay. But um, these are all things that would be uh, uh, nice, to, nice to have. Uh, make, make the new guy's experience less I, I'm gonna like a hazing. If I can jump in, I, your example that you just gave about the reserve parking, I'm, I think I'm, I'm I'm getting where that came from. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm thinking if if I come in and I build a big building with low intensity, you say we want two for one, but you can this much can be reserved. It's really not needed now. But if I then turn around and sell it to someone who uses the same building with with a higher intensity, now. Now it has to be paved, right. and, and the space yep. is there. Exactly. He, can't, he, he can't say it's a hardship. I don't have room for it. No, because it's reserved. Correct. Got it. Yeah. Can we re require that he pave it at that point, or somebody else? Well, and just like review exactly. if he doesn't have enough That's parking. We would. It would be. It would under, under change of use. Somebody yeah. come Let, Let's yeah. say the best example was where this came from originally. Somebody wanted to put up an industrial building that was eighty thousand, sixty thousand. It was sixty thousand square feet. Something like that. And he was going to require. Um, Six acres of parking. He had the he had the space, and he had twenty five employees. He needed less than an acre of parking because he has no visitors. And he's like, you know, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to pave all this because it's expensive and I don't need it. I got a snow plow and everything else. That's where that's where the reserve parking came up. And the environment's not good for the environment. And all all of those things. Yeah, yeah. Um, the building was never built because the project fell through. But if the building was built, industrial use, somebody comes along down a the road, they got a 60,000 square foot, they could turn it into an out, outland, let's say a 60,000 square foot restaurant. I mean, obviously it'd be massive, but now they would need that much parking because of customer right. base. Or a shopping okay. store or something. Right? Yeah, something like that, or a store, retail, yeah. whatever yeah. it would be. Right. Um, it's there, it's, it's been properly designed, you get the, the system can handle it, um, but if you don't need to pave it, you don't need to. If you need to pave it, you could pave it in a heartbeat. Yeah. That's a good question, Mark, because many <coughs> people want us to change the parking regulations only for that use of that particular building that's coming in, but an AutoZone store becomes Echelon Cafe, yeah. which obviously uses so. We, we, we need to have that. We've had a few incidents where uses have changed from exactly where your comment was, a low intensity to a much higher intensity parking. Wasn't needed, now it is needed. I'm down Railroad Street tonight about 9.30. Isn't that amazing? What's that, Quarters? Quarters, yeah. yes. They're parked up Who'd and down the street. Thunk it? Well, I, I, unbelievable. I, I had a similar... Well, the climbing wall was another one I said. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they're adding on. They're adding, they, they add, doubled the size of the building, and now they're doubling or quadrupling the size of the parking. I think I was at that meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And you Open had, like, wall, overflow yeah. parking on yeah. the paved. Yes. It was unpaved. Yeah. Right? yeah. They, they have all kinds of specials. I know my... Yeah. I, I know somebody lives in New York, and they'll come here special for the climbing wall on Saturday mornings for kids because little kids can climb special walls that are designed for I mean, up to like six years old. And I mean, for it's great exercise for the kids, don't get me wrong, and they absolutely have a blast doing it. You know? I used to climb a bank going down on the metal. You have to go up and hold on. 
Same, same thing. Oh, gosh. So, yeah. Well, but anyway, so okay. Uh, oh, so, thank you, Ken. Yeah, thank you, Ken. Thank you very much. We're very, uh, very pleased with, your, with the work that you're helping us with. Yeah, and uh, we'll see you on the 17th. Yes. I'll but actually, I'll see you on the 4th. I'll see you on the 4th. Okay. Uh, gentlemen. How are you? Good. How are you? Okay. You're up next. What do you got? Right. I'll stay here. <laughs> My support is not coming with me. He doesn't need support. He doesn't need support? He needs his glasses, but he doesn't need support. Uh, I'm going to... Yeah. There you go. They're ladies' glasses, so... I, sure. I'm assuming Bill, I recognize your voice. I'm Mark. Or, oh, it's Bill. I'm Bill. Oh. He has his glasses, glasses. I got the glasses, glasses, glasses. glasses. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have your pictures right now on... Uh, uh, I, I know there's going to be five of you guys. No, I think this is up for Scott. So, I'm sure you will be. Um, we're looking at renting the space in front of the Hampshire Mosque. Uh, right now, it has been vacant for the last uh, few years. Oh, the the old uh, mountain the, the outfitters. Outfitters, yeah. yeah. Uh, I know. I I talked to Bill briefly. Um, I guess parking was a concern with this. So we we own two escape rooms in Connecticut right now. Uh, we're looking at doing a third up here in the, uh, the Hadley area. So right now it's the best space that we have found so far to date. Um, we are going to be putting two escape rooms in and then a VR, a virtual reality, goggles and headsets and things of that nature uh, on the other side. Uh, right now, uh, based on what the mosque is able to give us, it's 16 dedicated parking spaces. Um, I think the biggest concern was this overflow and the parking issues. How many do you think 16 you said? 16. So one six. One six. Okay. Yeah. We've got 16 dedicated spaces. Obviously, on the nights, uh, the mosques, their busiest times are Fridays, uh, Friday prayers. Uh, they also have some busy times, obviously, during Ramadan and their dinners and, and things of that nature. Obviously, <coughs> when they're not there, uh, we are able to use some of the overflow parking lot. But for the most part, um, you know, we are a by appointment uh, facility. Uh, with the two rooms, uh, we stagger the rooms uh, in half-hour intervals, like like the uh, the sheet says. So for argument's sake, we start one room at 11 o'clock. Um, for the most part, most people, most cars come with one uh, in one car, maybe two. Usually families or, or people all, all coming out. Um, so we might have two cars there initially. Half hour later, we get the next group coming in. Each room is an hour, so we do have some overlap. But for the most part, the 16 parking spots is plenty compared to where we're at. Yeah, yeah, for where we are in Connecticut right now, uh, as these people are coming, we have a half hour reset. We don't anticipate even needing the 16 that we currently have. Um, for the most part, the most amount of people we can have in our rooms at one time between the two escape rooms and the VR, uh, eight, 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 six, what is that, 22 to 24 people would be the most that we can usually have at any one given time. Uh, and again, that's going to be staggered based on our appointment schedules. Um, so I think that was ultimately the, the, the biggest concern. I think that you were saying uh, in the conversation we had that we've, we've had some inquiries in regards to uh, some site plans for I think it was a halal butcher and some other things. Um, so right now, just trying to get some input from you. If, uh, is the same building the mosque is in? It is. The mosque is in the back. Uh, there is 3,600 square feet out in front. We're taking, we would take the entire 3,600 square feet. So that was supposed to be a, a you know, a lot of Yep. Yeah, they we decided need. not uh, to go again. I, and for whatever reason, I'm not sure the reasoning is behind not putting that in there. But uh, yeah, that was abandoned. I think that was uh, something that the, the congregation was going to do. So in effect, we have approved the site plan. It's just a matter of. What's going to go in there? What's going to go yeah, in there? Yeah. I mean, and, and the site has to, I mean, you're going to be limited by your parking space, as far as sounds like. Um, you I mean, you're in a college area. Yeah. Um, some days you'll get a couple of cars that will bring everybody in. Some days you probably get 10 cars with one person a car. Right. And something you're going to have to learn to deal with on your site because you can't park on a neighbor's. Correct. And uh, it, it, it's, 
it, it, it'll be something you're going to deal with, however you deal with it. Correct. And we're, we're prepared to deal with that, as I said, for the most part. I mean, we're not a shopping center where someone comes in and spends two hours kind of perusing through whatever they're sure. trying to buy. They have an hour. Our games are an hour long. Um, if in the VR, people will rent that space for their 10 minutes. It could be a half hour. It could be an hour. But once they're done, there's not loitering. There's not people hanging out. They're done. They're gone. And then they, they so it's not as if they could spend three hours. I mean, they could. If they're, they're going to be there three hours, they're going to have that space booked out. No new people are going to be coming in to occupy that. Okay. This, this is a curiosity, curiosity question. It has nothing to do with the zoning. Mm -hmm. How do the escape rooms work? Escape rooms, mm -hmm. uh, they are themed-based rooms. Uh, we have a, a prison one right now. We have a, a dragon kind of a castle, medieval, Harry Potter-ish, I can't really, type of, type of escape. Uh, people come in. Uh, they're solving puzzles. They may, quote unquote, be locked in specific rooms. Like our prison ones do have, uh, you know, closing cell doors that are magnetic locks. Obviously, we have safety mechanisms and safety features to make sure that if anyone does need to get out, uh, uh, they hit buttons. All the magnetic locks will get released. All everything opens up. Doors open up. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of a uh, cultural phenomenon right now. Everyone, uh, they're. So it's a group effort to solve a puzzle to get out. Hundred percent. Okay, so a group effort. They solve the puzzle. They get. A door open. Is it, does it like a successive doors or there, there, We have rooms that have multiple rooms. We have rooms that have uh, multiple <coughs> hidden rooms where they might not be aware. They saw something. They put something somewhere. They put a torch up and a torch holder and another room may open up. Uh, so it has a. Uh, it's a very. It's it's the opposite of what we do now with our phones and internet. Uh, we allow people to unplug for an hour. We allow people to interact with each other. A lot of laughing. A lot of fun. Where do they start? Are we, are we a, oh God, no! Uh, they started in in uh, Europe, Europe. Uh, really? in Japan, actually. Uh, Japan was the, one, of the, one of the first ones, and in Europe, to, it really took off in Europe. If you do any research, you probably heard about the big Poland accident. There was an accident in Poland with some of the escape rooms um, where some people uh, died. Uh, they were putting escape rooms in homes. Uh, it wasn't a commercial space at all, it wasn't being regulated in Poland at all. So <clears throat> there are, I mean, obviously horror stories or anything. You can go to the fire and that was at Rhode Island uh, years ago. And the, but, but again, so mm -hmm. totally unregulated, um, highly popular now in, in, in America. Uh, they're, they're gaining in popularity. Well, we've opened two in, in Connecticut, one in uh, Weathersfield and East Haven. Uh, really attracted to this environment. We've been looking at Northampton for a while. Uh, we love the proximity to the school. It sounds like something that you're going to really hit it off with the college group. Uh, with, uh, uh, I can imagine. With yeah. 10,000 new students a year, I mean, we, you, you get one group in and you got 10,000 new students, so our rooms won't become stale. We'll have a less uh, need to re uh, put new ones in because we're going to constantly have a, a, a new base. Yeah, changing the flow. Yeah. Yeah. So, what uh, changes, no external changes, zero. sign? Just Signage we have. There's an existing sign out. Obviously, we'll work with the the town to get signs approved. Uh, Externally those. illuminated. Ex yep. There's a. I know there's one there now. I don't know if there's electricity to it, but we will make sure that it, it's. I'm sure there is. Are these rooms prefab? You just bring them in. You build them right there. We have uh, contractors that do this for a living. So there, we have one right now. Goal is is to be open for the two escape rooms in January. Our VR is set to go. So if we got going, um, the way the space is set up right now, we could probably, uh, under a partial CO, open half the space while waiting for the rest of the rooms to be developed. And, and so our goal is really to hopefully get maybe open by October, uh, barring uh, you know, time. Uh, time is the biggest. It's just some kind of a, like a command room that's able to monitor and make yeah. sure no one's in. You know, yeah, the, yeah, the biggest thing with the escape rooms is, is in, in making sure the experience is as enjoyable as possible to all of our guests and, and to have the same experiences that, you know, we, you have a different levels of, uh, of expert being expert. I mean, we have people who do hundreds of these rooms a year uh, or have done hundreds of rooms and, and, and novices and we get clues, we have to monitor, so we've got uh, 
cameras in there. Cool. We've got headsets. We're listening in for verbal clues. That's also our way of giving them clues as they get started. Any age limits? Just to them? Well, we generally no. Um, we require anyone with minor children to come in and play with them and or at least be there. I mean, obviously, if we have a 16-year-old, we're not necessary. But we have waivers and online forums, and people are aware that um, you know, some of them, some of the, I mean, there's some falling in some tight spaces and things like that. They, they might have to get underneath and, and get something. So they're obviously going to have to be um, able to do those things, no different than the rock wall. There's certain people who aren't going to be able to do the rock wall climbing, so certain people who obviously aren't going to be able to necessarily do this. You can't bend over, you can't, um, but for, for uh, some of them are definitely going to be more adult <coughs> based too, but. Again, no different than movies and things of that nature. Um, not a major concern with, with, with ages. Cool. So I'll make a motion to waive further site plan approval for Laura's Labyrinth at 451 Russell Street. Uh, Further review of signage yeah. is required. Who's requesting this? Are you the president of a corporation, or are you? No, I'm just a small business owner. Uh, just doing business as. Okay. Oh, it's definitely not, it's Lars Labyrinth LLC. Oh, okay. Is it a franchise or something? No, or? no. no. I mean we purchase uh, existing companies that do these existing rooms, and, and uh, but we're not a franchise. We're, we're obviously we're in Connecticut now, so Lars Labyrinth LLC is a new LLC in Mass. Uh, but uh, no, we are not a franchise. I second Bill's motion. Just sit in here, I'm already feeling claustrophobic. <laughs> <laughs> we, we get that, uh, uh, a lot of people will come and say, hey, are you locking us up? And, and, and for the most part, I'd say 99% of the time, We've had, I've had two in almost a year now uh, not want to stay in the room. One was a 10-year-old boy, and another one was a, a girl who didn't speak any English whatsoever, came in there, got dragged in uh, by her boyfriend, um, and she sat in the corner like this the entire time. And finally, they let her. Uh, for the most part, nobody has ever gotten worried at all or nervous about being, you know, you can get into a bathroom on an airplane, for a couple minutes, he, he'll survive. Uh, he'll survive our rooms. Well, once you get into solving the puzzle, yeah. that yeah. is the focus. Yeah. 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 I did that with uh, Linda, and I did that with our son in New York City. Not only was it an escape room, it was in the third sub basement of the building. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay, so we've got a motion and a second to. Re way for the site plan review, but to come back to us with a sign when you're ready with a sign. Okay? And sign sign is just a matter of coming in here like here tonight. Yes, we approve it and you're good to go. Okay. 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 Motion. Um, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 And you opposed. Motion is unanimous. You're all set. Awesome, awesome. I will give Tim a copy of this. I'll make a copy, put it in his mailbox and uh, go to date tomorrow. Right, right. Okay, yeah, so that allows us to then start filling out some permits and applications. Well, you're, 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 I'm, I'm assuming you've got, what, what it sounds like you've got a fair amount of construction to do in this place. Oddly enough, the way they've got it split down the middle, um, yeah, I mean, we have not a lot of framing. Uh, some framing, some extra drywall, uh, half the space is already perfect, so um, <coughs> I, I'd probably say two or three days of framing and, and another, oh, okay. it's not, it, it's really minor uh, what we're looking to do. So. Yep. Well, good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, guys. What's going in at the old manis? They're they it looks like they're dividing it into two sections. I said the both of the three. Good night. Thank you. Yep. Thanks again. Right. Yeah, because no knows knows we went by yesterday. But uh, the whole front is torn off, so it looks like they've got a, a wall down the middle. It's going to be two different spaces. They haven't come before us. So yes, they did. They, come, they, came, they came before us and let us know what they wanted to do. Okay. And it's already gone through site plan approval. So all they got to come do, they don't have to come back with us when they have tenants yep. and signage. Okay. 
Mr. Gore, I have nothing else. Okay, so this um, is the uh, proposal from the town administrator for um, a development <coughs> protocol. Right. And the, I had written to, you had written to him with a comment about the timing. Right. And I wrote to him about with a comment about the, um, he said that uh, all of the comments of the other boards will be attached to the planning board decision. And I wrote to him, I think I copied you on it, right. and I said that that just isn't feasible because everybody's appellate route from an action of a board is different, and I'm writing a decision <coughs> to satisfy the zoning bylaw, right. and I'm not proposing to add everything else. Right, and um, I see that he's left that he in. He left here. that in, so um, I'm just going to say it's not ready to sign. He's been away, um, so. But also, the historical commission has kind of decided not to want to be on the review section of this anymore. Right, but they are in the bylaw. Oh, they're in the bylaw. That's right. So they, that would have to be amended to. Uh, but anyway, okay. I, I say it's not ready to sign. Um, yeah, because it's not reasonable. I mean, some of their things don't make like the fire department and police and cons. Those last three, they typically issue specific things to their departments. At least the, the conservation and fire department. They review something entirely different than zoning. Right. Well, they should look at you. You give them a copy. They, they get a copy of the you, plan. And, and but the, uh, the the dental office where the driveway was sufficiently had a turning radius, not able to accommodate the bigger right. fire truck. They missed it, and yet they wanted to tear it up. Yes. So that's not the. Well, that's their no, important yeah, that is. Yeah. There's two different things here. They should review it, the, the, the fire department should review it from that sense. But they also have the second review of fire safety, real, you know, fire alarms, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That has nothing to do with us. Correct. And we, we've got to be smart on what, if the way this is written, it sounds like there we should be putting all of this stuff in the zoning bylaw, and in, 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 in the zoning in the, in the zoning in the planning board site plan approval. Some of it does make sense, like the driveways, and I and I told asked the fire department, let us know what you want for certain things on plot design. We can make sure that driveways and stuff like that comply with what you need for fire truck turning radiuses. Okay, it, that's, we discussed it a little bit last time. I was unaware that uh, the town administrator was going to get involved and I thought we should have a checklist and Bill kind of assigned me the checklist and uh, so, uh, okay, we're, we're all in the same park. We want to yeah. make sure that it's convenient, we want to make sure that it's expedited, and I still think our process of going through uh, the permitting process is probably half of any other town as far as the timeline is concerned. So I don't think we should get a heartburn over it because somebody said there's the delay. There's usually a reason for the delay. Right, right. And, and all I'm saying is the fire department needs a certain radius and certain widths for the fire trucks. Well. If we make that known to our reviewing engineers, they can add that to the review process. It's not a big deal. There's okay. not a lot of stuff. Okay, not for us. You know, we can we can say we we have, you know, Berkshire and Hashmont or whatever. When you do the review, in addition to the zoning bylaw, make sure these two things are met. They're not a lot. We're not asking to review the fire design or anything else. Just the driveway design to make sure a truck can go. Um, you know, I doubt the police department is going to have a lot, a lot of comments as far as site plan. Well, I didn't think the Board of Health had a lot of input, but I met with them last Tuesday to see if they wanted that big package, and they said most of the time it goes because it's connected with the sewer, the larger building. Right. However, if there's any eating, kitchen, et cetera, et cetera, they would like to know about it. So 
still send us the your I, copy. They'll, they'll still get a copy. Okay. A building effect, like I give it to Tim, and he makes general comments uh, relative to the zoning stuff. So his comments are going to be pretty easy to incorporate. I just want to make sure it's clear that the comments that these boards are going to give to us, they give it to us in time. We, if we know ahead of time, it's a lot of them is, cook, is, is, is standard. The fire department needs a certain radius and certain width driveway. That's not something that's going to be difficult to have the zone, the, the engineering, the reviewing engineer incorporate. So they should be pretty But consistent. can we list everything? I mean, Bill brought up a good point that uh, Subaru wants to use the Abolic Garage owned by Echelon now. Where is the curb cut? Yeah, you're right, Bill. They, there is no indication of where the curb cut is supposed to be, and that's their responsibility. Yeah. So that, that thing, but at the same thing as Jim said, that everybody has a different basis. I'm not going to. I, I'm not going to attach the entire conservation commission order and condition. That's exactly it, correct. Um, correct. Yeah. And nothing we say in site plan approval has any weight on the kitchen on the conservation commission on right. the wetlands uh, right. wetlands protection act. Uh, if if the applicant comes in and says he wants to put the building right in the middle and that is a wetlands, we're going to approve it from our end, from a zoning end, but we may tell him he hasn't, it's not going to get through conservation and you're going to have to come back. But um, I think you just want to keep it simple. I, I, I do ap no, appreciate that they're trying to just help keep things running smoothly here. Yeah. Um, but it is uh, it's just some technical things that maybe are. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we just we want to, you know, or a pen, eat the power. I mean, we just want to make sure that what everybody's requesting is reasonable for the zone. All we can do is put zoning items in the decision. Yeah, if somebody comes in, we get a comment back from fire department that is zoning related, we, we will try to include it as right. a condition. And I am rewriting my standard conditions to make it clearer that this is um, solely a zoning determination. Right. Um, well, as you said, our decision is subject to other boards approval. Yeah, yeah right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But, so but, are we it, trying to change that? Yeah, we're, no, we're, we're, no, we're, we're trying we're, to. We're not trying to change. We're trying to hit them over the head with a much bigger hammer to make them aware of that. So yeah. one of the what one of the I mean? biggest yeah. complaints has been that someone will get through site plan approval uh, of all these lovely drawings and renderings, and then uh, <coughs> they find out what the uh, sewer impact fee is from DPW. Right. Yeah. Even though the decision explicitly says, subject to other board's approval, if and as required, including, I think I have sewer department, this is not permission to tie into the sewer line. But people, Marlowe was dealing with this, the prior DPW director, he complained that people were coming down and saying, but I have site plan approval. And I pointed him to that language, but apparently nobody reads the fifth page. Yeah. And, and maybe they put that put those kind of comments in the front page mm -hmm. to right. make it. Well, it's it's up, my point too, it's up to us to be aware, look, you've got to check with the, uh, if you want a curb cut on Route 9, you've got to check with the, the State Highway Department, yeah. or with the sewer, you've got to check with yeah. the yeah. So that's, I mean, with Mr. Okafor. So Mark, you haven't seen this in Mike, you haven't seen it all that much, but we get people coming in who say, well, I have a driveway on Route 9. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah, you have a driveway, but you don't have a commercial driveway from Mass, Mass Highway. And um, there's a difference. I have three driveways on Route 9 from my business. Yeah, but your business is not going to get three driveways. Your house may have had three driveways. but um, So it's just a piece of the regulatory merry-go-round that... Mm -hmm. uh, some, some people are on top of it, some just are Berkshire Design, a group like that, they know. Mm -hmm. It's generally when you're dealing with amateur hour. Yeah. But the, the bigger one, the bigger they are, typically the more aware they are of those things. It's the small bomb and pop where you run into the troubles. And we also, 
we don't want to punish the small mom and pops by not making them aware that you also need these things. So it's it's ones who it's their first rodeo and they don't realize mm -hmm. that, that this exactly. isn't one stop shopping. Yeah. Yeah. Or they've been or they've got a place in some, you know, out out who knows where, not around here, mm -hmm. and it was one stop shopping for whatever yeah. reason. Yeah. Um, well, here it is not. It is multiple stops. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? I do not have, uh, let's see. Um, You're the agenda. Yeah. Um, what do we do? We do I don't think uh, there's no need for executive session tonight. Right. Um, they are, the lawsuit will be defended by the uh, defendant. He's hired an attorney, and they're going forward. And it is up to the building, aren't they? Are they, are they, are they, are they are proceeding at their own risk. Proceeding at their own risk. Right. And I mean, he's well aware that when Route 9 expansion comes in, he's going to uh, be in tough condition with his place on Route 9. I mean, he, he can try to argue that one, but no, that's going to be they're, a, they're taking it. That's, that's going to be a tough one to, yeah. to do anything, but you know, get he's going to be all he can be able to do is negotiate. His money, but as far as losing it, it's ninety nine and nine tenths for sure is gone. As of the twenty five percent design, that property is the only one that is being taken in full. Right. Yeah. The one across the street isn't being taken in full, but what's going to be the way it's going to be built? I think there's about a what, an inch or two between it's, the right of way and the edge of the building. It's going to be like having a drive through window. <laughs> Yeah, right, right, right at, right at uh, the who whole owns, side of your house. Who owns that? Across the street from him? The, like, yes. the, the green, the, the green. Uh, the one that's kitty corner to the post office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, Valley, the, one, the one they just put new siding on this past year. Yeah, the Valley Building Company. It's oh, a, okay. it's a commercial rental. Uh, you know, they. That's not the one that has uh, earthworms out back, or something. That's somebody else. Right? I'm not sure. Well, I know that they didn't put they didn't put siding on the back part of the building because the back part of the building is already in the Route Nine right of way. Mm -hmm. Could they could they legally take, take the Hadley Town Hall? I mean, not not right now, but in 50 years, because they say that we need this. Probably. Yeah. You know? When they put the bullet train through, <laughs> extra second bike path yeah. or bike yeah. lane. The Disney train. Okay. Um, see, August, September. Oh no, this is August, September. We have to sign the uh, next day one. Okay, we're not going to month yet. I have nothing else. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you and thank you, John.